Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 16th lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. In the last lecture, we discussed about how to make the master budget. As I said then, the master budget basically reflects in financial terms, in monetary terms the annual plan or future plan that sets targets for the company. The targets should be achieved. Today we shall discuss that there are various reasons for which the targets may not be achieved. If for example, the sales, actual sales vary. If you recall, in the last lecture we said that the very basic assumption or estimate made is on sales on the basis of which the master budget is prepared. Now, if the sales estimates or sales forecasts does not hold true in practice. If the actual sales differ, differ by a great amount, then the budgets, the master budget needs to be changed. And that is the topic for today. One first part of our lecture today will be if the activity of the company undergoes a change the basic activity in terms of sales undergoes a change, then how the budget would differ and therefore, the performance of the company would differ. And the second part is that if various other budgets that we had prepared, if they also vary, then the actual figures, the actual performance will also change and then how therefore, we compare with the targets set by the master budget and then how we can interpret it and then who or which manager would be accountable for this. This is the topic for today and we will call this flexible budgets and variance analysis. By flexible budgets, we basically mean that if the sales forecast or certain basic assumption that we had made undergoes a change in practice, then a new budget needs to be prepared. This we call it a flexible budget. And then variance is basically the difference between the actual performance and the target that was planned in the budget that is the variance. So, today's topic is flexible budgets and variance analysis. Flexible budgets and variance analysis. Master budget is basically a static budget because it assumes the sales to be constant or certain key cost drivers are constant or unchanging therefore, it is a static budget, but the projected sales volume or some other key cost driver unit may change and therefore, we need to have a flexible budgets that are also called 
variable budgets and they adjust for these changes in sales volume or in values of key cost driver activities. The differences between the flexible budget and the actual results are called the flexible budget variances. Whereas, the differences between the master budget and the flexible budget amounts are called activity level variances. So, these are the two basic differences. The differences between the actual and the flexible budget is the flexible budget variance and the difference between the master budget and the flexible budget are called the activity level variances and they are written as either favorable with an abbreviation f or unfavorable with an abbreviation u. Say for example, if the master budget had assumed a sale of 50,000 rupees in the month of April, but the actual appears to be much less something like 40,000, then this is an activity level variance of sales and this is unfavorable. Now, in this connection we write down here this is the master budget the last column the master budget this is the actual results master budget had planned for x 0 number of units, but the actual results were x 1 only it could be more it could be less, but different it significantly differs from x 0. Therefore, we need to make a budget assuming x 1 number of units and not x 0 number of units. So, as I was telling if in the month of April the original assumption was that sales which is basically unit price into the number of units p x 0 p x 0 p is the unit price of, of unit rupees per unit and these many units in April. Suppose that this p into x 0 was 50,000 initial assumption for sales forecast, but actually it became 40,000. So, we have to make a budget assuming that it is 40,000 accordingly we have to make the budget that is flexible budget. Suppose that the total variable cost initially was unit variable cost V multiplied by the number of units in cell. So, that was V x 0 in the flexible budget it is V into x 1 V is the unit variable cost, but the actual variable cost could differ it could be T V A total variable cost actual. then we can compare between master budget and flexible budget and we can compare between actual and flexible budget we can also compare between master budget and actual results. Now, contribution margin is sales minus total variable cost it is P x 1 minus T V A for the actual for flexible budget it is p minus v into x 1 for the master budget it is p minus v into x 0. Assuming that fixed cost is constant all through for the master budget and flexible budget and the actual the operating income then becomes the contribution margin minus the fixed cost contribution margin minus the fixed cost contribution margin minus the fixed cost. Now, if we compare 
the columns call these columns this is column number 1 let us say this is 2, 3, 4 and 5. If we compare 1 with 3 since the cells here are same we would expect that the operating income as budgeted should be met because the cells are same. The actual may be less or more. If the actual is less then it is less than the target at this level of activity then it is unfavorable u. But if our actual results is better than this then it is favorable. Now, this is basically how efficiently a manager works the managers have worked in the month of April it is 1 minus 3 column 1 and 3 that means we compare the actual with the flexible budget at that level of sales at which the actual sales took place. So, it is it basically reflects the managerial efficiency whereas, if you compare the master budget that was originally planned and the flexible budget see the original plan was 50,000 rupees, but the actual became only 40, uh, the flexible budget was made for 40,000 because the actual was 40,000. Therefore, the operating income at this level is much less than the operating income at that level. This difference is called effective because the sales unit for which the forecast was made could not be achieved this that means, the company the sales managers were not very effective in increasing their sales activities, but given the sales the production managers were quite efficient in maintaining it. Now, if we subtract 1 and 5 that means, if we compare actual results with the master budget. 1 minus 5 is basically 1 minus 3 plus 3 minus 5. That means, if you add these two columns total you also get the same thing. So, basically this is flexible budget variance 1 minus 3 is flexible budget variance that indicates efficiency of the company in meeting its revised target of x 1 sales activity and this is called sales activity variance. This is how effectively the company has met its initial target. If you add these two you get the master budget variance. So, we have here introduced 3 4 terms 5 terms in fact, one the flexible budget of course, and the different variances flexible budget variance which is the difference between actual and flexible budget. We have defined sales activity variance which is the difference between flexible budget and the master budget and now we are introducing master budget variance which is the difference between actual results and master budget. Also at the same time we are saying that flexible budget variance reflects efficiency of the company it meeting its device target of x 1 or p into x 1 sales and effectiveness reflects the company's ability to meet its initial targets of p into x 0. So, we call these as this is this as flexible budget variance of operating income sales activity variance of operating income so on and so forth. Now, effectiveness sometimes is known as doing the right things the degree to which the goal or objective or target is met. So, for production manager the revised goal is p into x 1 that is to be met that is efficiency in fact, but doing the right things meaning the sales forecast 
was placed at 50,000. To what extent this has been able to be met? That is effective. And sales activity variance is a measure of effectiveness. Unfavorable sales activity variance are to be explained by the marketing managers or sales personnel. Efficiency is doing the things in the right way. That means, the if a company uh, it is found that the flexible budget variance is favorable, it means the company is doing its the production managers are doing the things in the right way. The degree to which inputs are given in relation to a given level of output. Unfavorable variances are to be explained by operating managers. So, this is the difference. The flexible budget variance is to be explained by operating managers, sales activity variance is to be explained by marketing or sales department managers and master budget variance is basically the difference between actual and master which is basically sales activity variance plus flexible budget variance as we have shown. Columns 1 minus 5 is basically the sum of the two variances. Let us take an example to illustrate this. A company plans to sell 1000 units of a product for rupees 2 per unit. Budgeted variable costs are rupee 1 per unit and budgeted operating income is rupees 400. The company actually sells 800 units. See it was planning to sell 1000 units. So, th this is something like master budget at a price of this, but the actual was 800. Therefore, it has to make a flexible budget for 800 and makes an operating income of rupees 200. This is the actual operating income. Compute and interpret master budget variance, sales activity variance and flexible budget variance. Now, this is how we go. Given master budget sale as 1000 units at the rate of rupees 2 equaling 2000 rupees and master budget variable cost is rupees 1 per unit and there are 1000 units. So, it comes to 1000 rupees. Master budget operating income is given as 400 rupees. Actual sale is 800 units at this price 2 rupees per unit. So, it comes to 1600 rupees and the actual operating income is rupees 200. So, these are the data given. We are required to find out these three variances. First of all sales activity variance of operating income. Sales activity is effectiveness. So, we will compare the flexible budget with the master budget operating income. The flexible budget operating income is same as actual rupees 200, but master budget operating income is rupees 400. So, this is unfavorable because of loss of sales instead of 1000 rupees it is now 800 units. So, the operating income has come down 200 unit. 200 rupees is unfavorable. When we talk about the master budget variance of operating income, it is comparing the actual operating income with master budget operating income. The actual operating income is also rupees 200 and the master budget operating income is 400. The difference is 200 rupees that also is unfavorable. But now look at the flexible budget variance that is actual in this case we compare what compare actual operating income with flexible budget operating income both are equal it is equal to 0. We can also get this information by sub we know that this is equal to this plus this. So, if they are equal this has to be 0. So, from here we see 
that the company has not been able to meet its original target of 1000 units therefore it is ineffective the company is not effective because it could not meet its original sales target but given the revised sales activity which is 800 units it has done well it has been able to meet its flexible budget of operating income of rupees 200 so it is efficient in terms of maintaining the operating income in the light of the new sales target of 800 units and 1600 rupees so this is the difference between efficiency and effectiveness Now, I am sorry, I like you hello, keep it up. Sorry, uh, at a breakdown. Hello, at a breakdown. मतलब एक की वाला किसी वाला भी रहा हो इंटरनेट या किसी एक टा तुम जखन बोल रहे तखन सुन रहे हाँ देखिए तुम भी ओके नाउ वी टेक अप ए वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड कॉस्ट बेसिकली a standard cost is a carefully developed cost per unit that should be attained. It is a building of planning and control system in a unit. Budget is actually a target for a group of items for the entire period whereas standard cost is basically a target for a unit of item that is the difference between budget and standard cost. To be able to control costs one need to have a standard cost. So, that is what we are trying to talk here. Here we shall discuss about standard material cost, standard labor cost and standard variable overhead expenses. Let us see one by one. First of all material standard quantity of material needed for a unit of output. Let us say that this is the designer tells us that this much of material is needed. So, basically it is a it is the design engineer who says that this is the amount needed the production manager also production engineer also says that this is the amount needed. So, that let us say is 4.8 kilogram. Then we give certain allowances for waste and spoilage based on previous practice based on input from industrial engineering division of the company. They say that this is 0.2 and therefore, standard quantity of material needed for unit of output is 5.0 kilogram. Now, from purchase department let us say that the net price of the material is 1.84 rupees per kilogram whereas, transport charges and material handling charges may come to 0.16 rupees per kilogram. Therefore, standard price of material per kilogram will be rupees 2 per kilogram. So, we know from here that per unit 5 kilogram is required and for standard price is 2 rupees per kilogram. Therefore, this multiplication this is 10 rupees 
per unit of output of direct material consumed. So, this is how standards are decided. Now, let us talk about labor standard assuming a piece rate system. Suppose that the industrial engineering department has done a work study and they have found the time required for efficient production as 0 0.4 hour 15 minutes per unit. 0.4 hour per unit and there is always certain allowances given for rest, for fatigue, for personal needs to the workers. Let us say that that is 20 percent of the total time and that total time is 0 0.5, 20 percent of that is 0 0.1 and this add up to 0 0.5 hours per unit meaning 30 minutes. So, this is the standard direct labor hour per unit 30 minutes or 0 0.5 hour per unit. Now, the basic hourly wage rate is let us say 12.50 rupees per hour on that we add taxes personal taxes and fringe benefits they may come to these amounts and direct labor rate then comes to 16 rupees per hour this is how standard direct labor rates are prepared. Now, the price variances can be calculated or usage variances can be calculated. The price variances also known as rate variance per labor is taken as equal to difference in the unit price of inputs multiplied by the actual units purchased. Suppose that there is a price variation of what we had standardized or what we have taken as standards and the actual there could be a difference. So, that difference multiplied with the actual units purchased is known as price variance. And if it is usage variance then we say that the price remaining constant the actual uses differ. We may have planned for certain number of units and the actual number of units needed was this the difference is taken and then they are multiplied by the unit price to give the usage variance. We are giving this in the form of an illustration. A company has a set of standard cost of direct material as rupees 10 per unit and a standard cost of direct labor as rupees 8 per unit. How are they derived? They are derived from this basic information that the standard input requirement is 5 kilogram per unit and the price standard price is 2 rupees per kilogram. So, 2 into 5 gives us 10 rupees per unit 50 minutes of direct labor half hour and they are paid 16 rupees. This example we had already taken in one of our last slides. So, this is how 16 into half makes it 8 rupees per unit standard cost of direct labor. This is prepared, this is set by the company. Now, in a particular year the company has incurred the following costs for the production of 7000 units of output. So, the output is 7000. So, on that basis they should have spent 10 rupees multiplied by 7000, 70000 as direct material cost and 7000 into 8, 56000 rupees as direct labor cost. Whereas, it was found that it purchased and used 36800 kilogram of material and the price was only 1.90 not 2, 2 rupees 1 rupee 90 paise and therefore, the total cost came as 69,922 rupees and for the labor instead of 16 rupees it had to pay 16 rupees 40 paise and it used 3750 hours of labor. So, the total cost came to 61,500 rupees. Find the price 
and the usage variances basically here that is the question. We now put them in the form of a table first of all the direct material and direct labor the flexible budget was 70,000 and 56,000, but the actual costs were 69,920 it is less. So, it is better it is favorable and by how much 80 rupees this is the flexible budget variance. The direct labor cost however, increased. So, this is unfavorable and the amount is 5500 unfavorable and we already have told how the 70,000 is calculated 7000 into amount needed into price and how the flexible budget for DL is calculated as 56,000 we have discussed already 16 rupees half hour 7000. Now, the direct material price variance will be price difference multiplied with the quantity used the price difference is 1.9 minus 2 rupees per kilogram actual quantity is 36,800. So, price direct material price variance is 3680 rupees favorable whereas, direct labor price variance is actual quantity multiplied by the difference between the two prices 16 minus 16. 16.40 minus 16 into 3750 that is equal that equals to 1500 rupees also favorable. I am sorry this this is favorable, but this appears to be unfavorable because they are paying more price for direct labor. So, actual price is 16 rupees uh, 16 rupees 40 paise. So, this is unfavorable there is a mistake here. Now, the direct material usage variance is the actual quantity used minus standard quantity allowed into standard price. Now, this is 3600 rupees unfavorable they have used more material and direct labor uses here is also unfavorable because they have used more direct labor more quantity. This is 4000 rupees unfavorable. Now, this this is shown here in this form this axis is input quantity and only the unfavorable situation is shown there. This is the standard quantity planned for the actual quantity may be more. Similarly, on the y axis we have shown input price and this is the standard price and we have shown an unfavorable situation of actual price being higher than the standard price. Then we say that the standard price multiplied by standard quantity is the standard cost. The price variance is given as the difference in the price prices which is actual minus standard multiplied by the actual quantity used. So, this is the price variance the usage variance is at the standard price the difference between the actual quantity and the standard quantity. So, this difference multiplied by this height is the standard price that is called the usage variance. Now, we talk about overtime variances it is difficult to make a standard for overtime variance but suppose that we are talking only about variable overhead variance and variable means that it depends on certain things. Suppose that we assume that it is a direct function of direct labor hour then we can say 
or define a quantity called variable overhead efficiency variance as actual direct labor hour minus standard direct labor hour multiplied by standard variable overhead rate per direct labor hour. So, this difference is multiplied by this thing has to be naturally found out and, and taken as a standard. Then we can also find out variable overhead efficiency variance. Usually, such cost control performance reports are prepared. This is an example. A two things that we have already just now talked about is direct material and direct labor. And these are the data and this is favorable and this was unfavorable. The managers are supposed to give explanations for both favorable and unfavorable variances. In this case, if direct material cost was variance was favorable, then it is because of lo lower prices and higher uses. That is the reason why it gave rise to a favorable variance, but direct labor was unfavorable and it could be because of higher wage rate from 16 rupees it was 16.40. So, that is the reason. So, such explanations are called for from different operating department managers they are supposed to give reasons why shipping expenses for example, has unfavorable and it could be because they had to go for air transport which is more costly. Factory supervision may be unfavorable because there had been an unforeseen salary increase of the supervisors. So, this more or less gives a pressure on the managers they have to explain why the variances were there particularly why there were unfavorable variances and if there were favorable variances how to work upon this and make it even more favorable. So, this is how costs are controlled. Now friend we are now going into a little more involved topic of responsibility centers. You might have heard of cost centers, profit centers and how to therefore, control costs in those centers that is the topic now responsibility centers. Basically a responsibility center is a set of activities and resources assigned to a manager, a group of managers or other employees. So, basically it is a set of activities and resources put together assigned to a manager. So, a manager is responsible basically for a responsibility center. Therefore, he is accountable, he owns, he takes decisions, he has an authority and he is also responsible for achieving the targets. An examples are suppose that there is a production supervisor he is in charge of a set of machines. So, the responsibility center is a set of machine and he is the overall in charge. A department is a responsibility center, the department head is in charge. The entire organization is a responsibility center and the chairman and managing director is the person who is responsible for the entire organization's performance. Now, we can classify responsibility centers into three types broadly cost center, profit center and investment center. Cost centers are one a cost center is one in which managers are responsible for costs only. An example is a maintenance department there is no profit here an assembly line. So, only cost. A profit center on the other hand is the entire organization or a guest house, a university press, even a transport section. Here not only costs, but also revenues are considered and therefore, the difference between the revenue and cost that is profitability is the main concern is called a profit center. Sometimes also 
one talks about an investment center in which the success of the responsibility center depends on both the income and the invested capital. Meaning here we talk about not only revenue and cost, but the amount of investment made something like return on investment. So, a company as a whole or a division of a company is an example of an investment center. Now, normally we design management control systems. The management control system is basically a set of techniques for gathering and using information to make plan and control decisions, evaluate performance and thereby motivate employees. Now, it encompasses two sets of control. One is administrative control through budgets, the second is accounting controls. Already we have considered the budgetary control, the administrative control. Accounting control is what we talk about here. It consists of methods and procedures that are concerned with authorization of transactions, accurate recording and safeguarding of assets, reconciling accounting records with independently kept records and physical counts and promoting operating efficiency by examining policies and procedures. This is accounting control systems basically ensuring that there are no errors or irregularities. Now, to design a management control system, we normally what we do is to first identify a responsibility center specifying the primary responsibility for each action. Then we develop performance measures and targets and then monitor and report on the actual performance and their variances. Normally, the performance measures should be such that they must relate to the goals of the responsibility center. It must reflect the responsibility centers managers key actions and activities and it must be influenced by the managers and employees actions of that responsibility center. It should be so easy to understand by the employees that they should work towards achieving the target and these measures should be used in evaluating and rewarding them and should be used consistently and regularly. So, this is very important how to fix the performance measures and these are the important things to remember to set the performance measures. They could be financial or they could be non-financial. Financial measures already we have discussed about variances, about standard costs we have already discussed them in detail. Non-financial measures are gaining importance now. In course of our discussion, we shall talk about quality of products and services, what is expected as quality targets and what is actually achieved and how to control quality. These are the things that we shall discuss in great detail and quality comes as non-financial measure. The second is productivity. Productivity is the ratio between output and input, how much input resources we have spent in achieving our output. Either with the same input, we can increase the output or we can reduce the input to get the same output. So, in either case, 
if output is increased for the same input spent there is there, there is a increase in productivity or to achieve the same output if we reduce our input then also productivity is increased. Therefore, the target on productivity could be sent and could be set and then we may decide we may work on various actions of the managers to improve productivity. That is another non-financial measure of performance. The third type of non-financial measure is the cycle time. Basically, cycle time means how well we schedule our activities, how well we are able to keep our output ready for delivery to the customers. If there is a delivery delay, then we are likely to lose a particular potential cell and that is unfortunate. Therefore, cycle time should be as less as possible basically production time cycle time means production time should be as less as possible. So, that we can produce as more materials as more output as possible in a particular time period and that improves our production figure that improves our schedules that improves the availability of finished products for delivery to the market and to the customers. So, the details about the first three non-financial measure namely quality, productivity and reduction of cycle time we shall discuss in great detail in our subsequent lectures when we talk about production management in some detail. For the time being we go to the fourth non-financial measure which is balanced scorecard. Balanced scorecard basically says that it is just not financial measure measures that are important also important are processes, customers and competence issues. On the financial measures, so you can see that this balance scorecard contains both financial the financial measures and the non-financial measures. There are three types of non-financial measures one is the processes that produces the output the people for whom the output is prepared and the ability of the people the employees to be able to make our products suitable for customers and make them available in quality in right quality right price and at right time. On the financial aspects already we have already seen these things one is profit, income, working capital, cash flows, inventory turnovers. So, these are financial measures. Processes percentage reduction in process cycle time, number of design changes, capacity utilization, order response rate, process capability. Some of these terms we shall discuss in detail later when we talk about production management. Customer issues such as if there had been a customer survey where this particular company is ranking market share of the company in this particular market, how many times customers have repeated their orders a particular customer has repeated its order, whether customer complaints are many or whether their brand stands as separate in comparison to the competitors. These are customer issues. About the employees of the organization there are issues like leadership competence, patent protected turnovers, number of days for which the employees are giving training, whether the team have participated in various quality improvement programs that the company is exercising or organizing, 
Now, these are competence issues. So, basically balanced scorecard shows not only financial figures, but the non financial figures as well. Now, to sum up I would like to say that a master budget basically makes a financial or reflects a financial figures of the annual plan made by company and its managers. The actual sales figure could be different and therefore, flexible budgets need to be prepared. Once flexible budgets are prepared, we try to see how efficiently the company and its managers have been able to meet the flexible budget targets. If they have not been able to meet the flexible budget targets, they are inefficient. And if they meet and more than meet the flexible budget targets, they are efficient. Now, if the actual sales activity is more than the master budget sales activity, the company is effective. If it is not, the company is ineffective. Accordingly, different, different variances could be favorable or unfavorable. Then we discussed about control aspects. Control aspects one is from the budget, this is a macro control. From the budget values, we can find out what favorable or unfavorable variances have occurred, why they have occurred, who is responsible. But at the unit level, we can also exercise controls by defining certain standards, standard direct labor, standard material cost and standard variable overhead expenses. Given these values, we can find out the usage variance and the price variances. Apart from these variances, we can also go for different other types of performance measures for particular responsibility centers. Responsibility center is basically a set of activities and resources which is controlled by a manager. We can define responsibility centers as cost center, profit center or investment center. Accordingly, the reports have to be made and the management control system has to be designed and the values have to be monitored and fed back as reports to the concerned managers and they are supposed to explain if there are variances. Important thing to note here is that financial measures is not the only thing, important non-financial measures particularly relevant to the processes, to the customers and to the employees are also important. Balance scorecard is a device in which all the performance measures financial and non-financial concerning processes, customers and processes, customers and uh, the competence of the employees are also given due weightage. So, in these two lectures on budgets, we have talked about how to prepare master budgets, how to prepare flexible budgets, how to find variances, how to, at the unit level to define standard costs and how to design management control systems. Thank you very much.